Hey, what is going on guys, Danny here, hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we'll be looking at some cooling benchmark results which I conducted on my Ryzen 5 3600 6-core CPU. A few months ago, I made a similar video where I showed some results from upgrading the Ryzen 5 3600 stock cooler, the Wraith Stealth, to the Wraith Prism, which is the stock cooler that comes with higher-end Ryzen 3rd gen SKUs like the Ryzen 9 3900X. To recap, what I ended up finding was that the stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 5 3600 really isn't all that great. If you're running stock settings and are just gaming, it's fine, but as soon as you brought in any heavy production apps which makes use of all the cores, the temps were definitely higher than what I would be comfortable with. Whereas with the Wraith Prism, temps all around were quite a bit lower. Now for those tests, I conducted them on an open test bench. The reason why I mentioned that will be important later on. The Ryzen 5 3600 was purchased because I was in the process of making a secondary gaming PC that would be hooked up to a TV for a couch gaming setup. I recently purchased an LG OLED C9 and have that secondary rig hooked up to it, and the experience I gotta say is phenomenal. I'll be making a showcase video sometime hopefully in the near future. But going back to the topic on hand, I built that rig using a Cooler Master Q500L case. Now I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with this case as being infamous for pretty poor thermals. However, I find that this case gets overlooked for what it really tries to accomplish and doesn't really get enough credit for. The fact that it has the ability to accommodate a full size ATX motherboard in such a small form factor, comparable to ITX cases, was the main selling point that attracted me in the first place. I had an X370 ATX board laying around since I upgraded to the Ryzen 9 3900X with an X570 Aorus Master for my main personal rig and sold my 1800X. But I was going for a living room setup, I didn't want a giant mid tower there taking up space. So this case not only has a small footprint, but allowed me to reuse my old motherboard with my 3600 and I didn't have to pay a premium for an AM4 ITX board and ITX case. As I had gotten this case for $50, it definitely didn't seem like a bad deal. Though after building this system, the thermals definitely did become problematic and concerning. While the Wraith Prism worked fine in that open test bench, it wasn't performing optimally in the Q500L since it was choked for airflow. I do have two intake fans mounted on the bottom but they get blocked off by the extremely long graphics card, and I can't mount any fans on the front since that's where the PSU is mounted, therefore causing the Wraith Prism to perform significantly worse than how it performed on the open test bench. Not only that but noise increased as well which really annoyed me. Luckily, I had a solution for this problem. That is where Thermaltake's Water 3.0 ARGB all-in-one 120mm liquid cooler comes in. I had this cooler installed on my RTX 2080 with a Kraken G12 until I decided to go even further and upgraded that setup to the 360mm version. With this one laying around, I thought I'd put it to good use and it definitely helped control the temps and lower noise too. Now before we get into the benchmark results, let's just quickly go over some specifications for the setup and the AIO. This is a single 120mm radiator design so it can have one 120mm attached to it or two on either side for a push-pull configuration. The pump and water block are using your standard Asatec design so Compatibility shouldn't be an issue with most sockets. It's also got RGB Sync, which works with ASUS's Aura Sync, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, MSI Mystic Lighting, and ASRock Polychrome. As for the motherboard, we've got the Gigabyte AX370 Gaming 5. For the RAM, we've got 16GB of G-Skill Trident Z, clocked at 3600MHz with tuned CL14 timings. The GPU is an MSI RTX 2080 Super Gaming X Trio, and the power supply is a Corsair Vengeance 750W 80 Plus Silver. For full system specs, you guys can check out the video description down below. So now that we've gotten the specs out of the way, let's jump into the results. For the first test, I decided to test both coolers in an idle condition. Here we can see the Wraith Prism averaged 44 degrees Celsius at idle and peaked at 57 degrees Celsius while the Thermaltake AIO averaged 39 degrees Celsius and peaked at 54. So that's almost a 13% difference for the coolers based on the average results. Now bear in mind though, even though I'm calling this an idle test, Windows is never actually really in an idle state. There are always background processes that are active, which is why you see such variance in the temperature swings. This line graph gives us a better insight over what happens when we plot the data over time to see the behavior of the cooler. And you guys can see that for a majority of the duration, the Thermaltake AIO has lower temps, but both coolers exhibit these spikes in the testing period overall. For our next test, we've got a fairly heavy CPU synthetic stress test, IDA64, which was left running for an hour. These tests here will show us the worst case scenario for these CPU coolers. You're hardly ever going to see these kinds of loads for, with figures like these under a 
real world scenario. Although it is something good to keep in mind and let's just see how well or bad the coolers do under an extreme load such as this one. Especially in the Q500L which is already thermally constrained. The Wraith Prism doesn't appear to be doing too well where it averaged 90 degrees celsius and peaked at 92 degrees celsius. This is quite the change from the previous video where the Wraith Prism performed much better in an open test bench setup where it previously averaged 79 degrees celsius and peaked at 82 but now it appears to be performing just like the Stealth so you can imagine what would have happened if we had still used the 3600 stock cooler. This is where the Thermaltake AIO definitely helped keep the temps under check where it averaged 78 degrees celsius and peaked at 81. The line graph shows us just how consistently better the AIO is performing under this load, regardless of the poor airflow from the case, but like I said, this isn't necessarily reflective of a real world scenario, so let's move on. So speaking of a real world scenario, for our next test, we've got Blender. We'll be able to see how the CPU coolers perform in a scenario where the user might be doing some production work, which can be quite heavy on the CPU. During the render, we can see that when using the Wraith Prism, the Ryzen 5 3600 runs quite hot during the load, averaging 88 degrees Celsius and peaking at 90 degrees Celsius, which are figures similar to what we saw from our IDA test. Switching over to the Thermaltake AIO, and we are seeing drastically lower temps. A difference of 14% for the averages, so it's working really well at dissipating the heat during the heavy workload and cooling the CPU. This is actually beneficial too because in our line graph we can see that near the end we see a drop off in temps and that's because when using the AIO the R5 3600 completes the test just a bit earlier than with the Wraith Prism. The R5 3600 was running pretty hot to the point where the CPU was regressing its clocks back. With the AIO the C3600 can keep up with boosting its cores and allow for better performance. The last scenario we'll be taking a look at is gaming, and for our title we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider. When it comes to a 3D application like a game, there's a lot more variance when it comes to the temperatures for the CPU, as there will be parts that are more heavier on the CPU making it work harder and raising temps, and some parts where the CPU doesn't have as heavy of a load on it. But for the most part, the GPU is what will be doing most of the work here. It's not like a production app like Blender where all the cores are loaded up to 100% for the render. In this test, we can see the Wraith Prism putting up decent numbers, 75 degrees Celsius for the average and peaking at 81 degrees, which isn't too bad, but if you remember from our previous test, the Wraith Prism performed a lot better, averaging 58 for the average and peaking at 69, so it just goes to show you how badly an air cooler can start to perform if it's placed in such a thermally constrained case. When switching over to our AIO, the temps are definitely a lot better. It averaged 58 degrees Celsius and peaked at just 65. That's a difference of 17 degrees in a gaming scenario where it isn't too heavy on the CPU in the first place. With our temperatures over time graph, we can see how both lines are gradually rising and then plateau off at the end, with a big difference between the two coolers. As this system will be mostly used for gaming, these are the kinds of figures I would be comfortable with, whereas temps ranging from the mid 70s to low 80s could be problematic, especially with the noise that would bring. So there you guys have it. After seeing these results, I can say that if you are going to be using the Ryzen 5 3600 in a small form factor case where airflow isn't a design priority, then you'll definitely want to upgrade from that stock cooler to an AIO at the very least. I'm glad I had this Thermaltake 120mm AIO laying around, and I've got to say that I am particularly impressed with these Water 3.0 AIO coolers. They aesthetically look great, come with separate controllers, and provide excellent cooling performance all the while staying acceptably quiet. Sure, it adds a considerable amount to the overall cost of the system and to the CPU, but I mean if you're going to be going the small form factor route, be prepared to pay a premium anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Let me know your thoughts down below, check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. If you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.